The following podcast is taken from a live broadcast on Inspire FM. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to the Book Club Show on Inspire 105.1 FM. Um, my name is Imran, I'm your host today and the date is the 7th of January. The time is um, just a little bit before 10. Um, so yeah, I'm bright and early for once. Um, I'm actually well known for... Um, I shouldn't be even be admitting this on air, but I do um, tend to uh, turn up um, late to places sometimes but not today I'm actually extra early um so I hope you all have all had a lovely um new year it is now 2020 which is absolutely amazing and we're already one week in um which really does remind us, I think, that time is a construct, but also the fact that it completely eludes us. So no matter how much we try to plan, um, yeah, I mean, time just runs away. But um, my children are back at school um, this morning, and that means I am now able to focus, obviously, on books, which is exactly what the book club show is about. Um, What I thought I would do um, today is just go through... Some of the books that um, highlights, I guess, from um, last year, some of which I mentioned on the Friday Night Live show um, a couple of uh, weeks ago with uh, Brother um, Zafar. Um, but today, and then what I will do is just give you a bit of a lowdown on some of the books I'm hoping to read um, this year and have some wonderful guests and authors in the studio Um And I thought, actually, if everyone has an idea of what um, books I'll be reading, you can either um, read them beforehand, in which case we can um, talk about them on the show when you would have had um, a chance to read um, some of the material and then have some really, really interesting discussions. Um, So basically from um, last um, last year, 2019, um, I had uh, the pleasure of obviously having some amazing guests. Um, more recently, I had um, a young girls a book club group. They formed a book club and I had them on just before the holidays. And I think it was really wonderful to be able to talk to young readers about some of their interests, um, I guess in terms of what they like to read, but also why they like to read. And that's obviously the foundation of what the book club show really is about. It was about rekindling that love of reading. Um, and just because I do find that when I'm talking to people about, you know, I mean, I just mentioned the idea of, of, you know, time and how we um, enjoy, you know, spending it. And books, it's always at the top of everyone's list. So I always have people, oh, yeah, you know, it's, oh, yeah, I've got this book on my shelf or, you know, I really love reading this. But then I also um, counter a lot of um, statements like, oh, I just don't get enough time to read or I wish I had more time to read or you know I only get time to read when I'm on holiday so there's all these um, statements I get and I think actually to me I've kind of been there and I still do sometimes struggle even though I'm the host of the book club show to find time but I think that's what it's really about it's actually about being really proactive and trying to find even if it's just you know um, 10 minutes 20 minutes half an hour a day where you just kind of putting aside some time whether it's in you know, your bedroom before you're going to sleep. I don't know whether it's first thing in the morning, but it's really about putting aside time and committing um, ourselves to making sure that we are reading. And I think that's what's important because we don't want to put pressure on ourselves or even our children or young people because for me, reading has always, always, always been about reading for pleasure. Um, I think this sense of, um, I know there's a lot of conversation in schools that when reading you know, is forced upon, you know, children or young people, they tend to actually turn away from it, become resistant. And that really is the last thing that we want to be doing. I mean, one of the things I made um, an intention for with my children, especially, was to actually read a book together. Um, So a few, uh, a couple of months ago, um, on the show, when I was with the um, Young Girls Book Club group, we read um, the book, The Boy at the Back of the Class by Anjali Rauf. Um, So this book was about... um, Uh, a Syrian child who'd fled from war Um, and the whole story was on the premise of this um, child beginning in a new school and the friendship I mean the basis of it was friendship and how three four other children wanted to become his friend and support him and also this idea that obviously if he was feeling lonely because obviously he'd been 
separated from his family on his journey from Syria. Um, and I think that idea of increasing empathy was actually so, so amazing. And we know for a fact that that's what reading does. The fact that you're able to relate to characters or you're able to kind of go on a journey with a particular character, it does increase empathy. It helps to put yourself in the shoes of somebody who you might not usually find yourself um kind of relating to and I think that's a beautiful thing about books it's a beautiful thing about reading that you are able to suddenly transport yourself I guess um, into a completely different world and I think the idea of widening our imagination and being able to really utilize the gift from Allah the fact that we have our intellect but also more than that the emotions that we feel on a daily basis how can we process them so I really do believe that depending on what book you read and how you might be feeling in your own life you really are able to process certain emotions and um, that kind if you're stressed you you will feel actually much lighter if you're feeling anxious you know I it, it does help you feel um much better in terms of the perspective and things. So this book, um, The Boy at the Back of the Class by Anjali Ralph was really, really uh, beautiful. I think the young readers I spoke to, they really, number one, I think being able to give them an insight into um, the war in Syria and how that would affect and the impact it would have on children, but also the power of friendship and how all of us in our own lives, if we're parents, how we instill that power of empathy in our um, children. But even as children, as young readers, if they then go on to perhaps you know there's somebody new starting in school they'll already understand that actually I need to be really kind to this person or I need to be you know go out of my way to help them and I think those are really um things that are um important um so the um other books that um will be read so some of the um other books uh, we'll be reading um I will be talking a little bit about um, just after I play um, a lovely Nasheed. So um, we are going to go straight over to, that's once I am able to um, use my mouse on this computer. So, you know, um, obviously there's lots of screens <laughs> in the studio, but it's okay, but the tarot is going to help me. Um, so maybe I thought I was being quite perky, but I didn't have my uh, cup of tea this morning. But we are going to head over to Maher Zain's I'm Alive. You're the reason my life's worth living. You're the reason I'm alive. I'm alive, I'm alive. <laughs> 
Assalamualaikum and welcome to the book club show on Inspire 105.1 FM. The date is Tuesday the 7th of January. It is um, nine past ten and my name is Imran and I am here today talking about books, books and books of course. Um, and just before, that was a lovely nasheed by Mahir Zain and Atif Aslam called I'm Alive. Um, and so just before that I was talking a little bit about um, a book that I read in um, part of la- uh, last year, which obviously because we're now in tw- 2020 um called the boy at the back of the class by Anjali ralph with a, um, a young um readers um who have their own um, book club group and um i thought i would spend just a little bit of time talking about some of the books and the importance of reading really because i think it's the new year it would be absolutely wonderful to know that many maybe many of us have made um intentional new year's resolutions if we if any of us um kind of bother doing those and sticking to them actually more importantly um and just taking time out to to read and really putting time aside in our routine where whether it's first thing in the morning late at night you know or even during um, a lunch break or something that where even if it's just you know for 10 minutes putting time some time aside to do some reading and when i say reading it doesn't necessarily have to be um a novel you know even if it's something you know an article that you've come across or um, something in particular that really just takes you away from the daily grind. Um, And I think what I was saying just before um, was in terms of reading as a tool to increase empathy. So whether that's, you know, for ourselves or for our children, it's really, really important there. We're able to, um, I think, relate to characters. And obviously this is the idea, and we've spoken about it on the show many times before, the importance of representation, that we're able to see um, ourselves in the books and in the things that we read. Because is that being able to relate to a particular character or a particular experience, I think, just enriches um, everything about, you know, um, a journey that somebody is on. And if we're able to relate to that, I think it makes it so much more um, meaningful. Um, another, I mean, highlight of 2019 was also um, reading um, Khalil Muhammad's um, comic book, all, all um, on Muslim like it was a Muslim comic book and I think it was really lovely because it was the first time I discussed actually um, a comic on the book club show but the fact that you know talking to um, Khalil Muhammad about the importance sometimes of being something having something really highly visual for um, not just young readers even um older readers but the fact that that kind of aesthetic beauty that comes with the illustrations for a comic is you know again something can be highly um, appealing but again I think one of the most interesting things I found from um, with some all-stars comic book was the fact the you know diversity in terms of the characters because you had um, obviously both um, kind of girls and boys in terms of um, characters but also the families the backgrounds um, the experiences that they'd all had um, I think again was really reflective of maybe a lot of the children um, that you would find you know uh, you know in school or you know in our own families and I think again if you can have a diversity of characters and have then children be able to relate to at least a particular character or a particular experience again um, makes I think a book like that so um, I think beautiful to read and I think all these things are so um, you know really um, important um, I've had obviously some amazing uh, guests one of the books that we read was also um, well it was called 
um, When I Hit You by Mina Gandaspi. And I think it's really important, actually, as part of the book club show, that we don't really shy away from certain subjects. So even something like um, domestic abuse, domestic violence, is, I think to be able to give a platform on this show for subjects which, you know, are still taboo. So whether it's in our own you know, certain faith communities or even just in you know, general wider society, the idea that we aren't able to talk about these things or if um, particularly women um, raise this issue that either, you know, not, not believed or not listened to. And I think the more we're able to talk about these issues and especially as, um, as Muslims, I mean, there was a wonderful event that happened um, it was, uh, well, in December, and I had actually uh, by London Fatwa Council, and it was uh, led by Sheikh Yazdani. I had him on that show when we were discussing uh, When I Hit You, and it was a fundraising event, and it was really an opportunity for people to come together and, you know, obviously fundraise for the fact that there are women in really, really vulnerable situations who are in marriages in which they really shouldn't be because they are being, um, you know, abused, whether it's physical, whether it's uh, emotional. And actually, the the more we're able to talk about these things, the more we are able to then deal with, I think, certain um, issues. And I think it's really important that as a community that, that we can do that. And this is why I'm always um, kind of, I guess, banging on about, you know, uh, the arts as well, because there's certain um, issues in society that actually we can deal with through the arts. So whether it's the art of reading or the art of um, writing or, you know, drawing or whatever it might be we need to be able to highlight um the things that are going on obviously both positive and negative and make it a means of um discussion and conversations with with each other with other communities you know and i think that's what really um interfaith relations into community relations should be about where we need to kind of stop being uh you know highly superficial when we're all together in a space um it's really good to celebrate things and and, and obviously focus on the positive but by the same token, it's even more powerful, I think, to be able to say, okay, you know what, these are the certain issues at the moment. What can we do um, to come together and tackle those? Um, and especially with um, everything that's going on in terms of the social, political climate, sometimes I think grassroots communities coming together can really, you know, um, work as a catalyst uh, for um, positive social change. We don't need to always wait for, I think, things to happen top down because unfortunately that rarely um, ever happens Um, so yeah I think you know in terms of the book club show I'm always looking for suggestions on what kind of books that uh, we can read I think what's been really fantastic over the years is um, many of you might know I also run um, Dara Amana book club which is actually a physical book club uh, women only we meet once a month and that book club um, alhamdulillah has been running for over five years and we have always been um, willing I think to read books which are maybe out of our comfort zone or books that maybe I would never have actually come across or thought to read because we all put book suggestions in. Um, It's really great to kind of widen that scope of the type of um, genres that we're reading or the type of material that we've been reading. And I think um, that's the best thing I think about being able to read a book and then share your views and opinions with with somebody else it's why I kind of enjoy um the book club show on on Inspire FM because it gives me an opportunity where I've uh, read a book and you know if I have um guests in the show we're able to really kind of tease out the things that we're thinking and we're not obviously always um it's not always things that we um agree upon which I think actually makes the conversations much more interesting um and I think one of the books that from last year that we read, which I think brought about quite, um, I guess, powerful um, discussions with one another was um, Why I'm No Longer Talking to White People About Race uh, by Rene Dolodge. And I think that, I think any time we start talking about um, th- you know structural racism I think it's 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 interesting actually why these things sometimes turn into debate it's almost like as people of colour you're having to um, justify your humanity which is kind of really ridiculous but we know the world that we live in we know from even if you've read um for example, the autobiography of Malcolm X, which was obviously, I mean, he lived his, you know, so, you know, quite a while ago, but the 
you know, sh- struggles that he faced in terms of being a, a black American man and then obviously um, Muslim. Those things still, you know, um, exist today. Those struggles still exist today. Um, and in the UK, we know kind of the boldening of um, the far right and some of the rhetoric. You know, it doesn't seem, I guess, the most positive thing you know going forward in terms of uh who we have in government government and the things that are being said um but it was a really um great article by suhaima manzul khan um just um, a few days ago and she was obviously talking um, about specifically Boris Johnson and and this kind of rise almost of a platform for Islamophobia and um and you know I think it's so important to know that what even despite what's going on, what we are able to do to be proactive in terms of um, the conversations we should be having. And, you know, for example, um, everything about the prevent strategy, like not not kind of getting involved in terms of counter um, counter terrorism, counter extremism kind of programs when with respect to, you know, something like prevent. And it's really important that as and not only just as Muslims, but um as part of communities that we don't we always are striving to challenge the status quo I think it's important that we don't just um, I don't know just stay laid back and don't really challenge and critique stuff and and I think that's the difference where people you know they assume that when you're um, sharing your own opinion which goes against the grain that somehow you're being you know you're just being critical and just criticizing always being negative all the time actually that's not what it is being having critique or giving critique of something is actually really important skill to have it means that you just you don't become like a blind follower for what whatever is going on around you and it's a really healthy thing to do actually and again it's something that if as parents or teachers or as you know faith leaders it's we should be really instilling that in um uh, the people that maybe are you know learning from us or taking from us and i think books are definitely um a way to be able to do that um and then obviously the fact that as inspire fm and you know some of the focus that we have in terms of our own muslim communities i mean one of the most amazing books i think i really enjoyed um discussing on the book club show was um uh, muhammad by um martin lings and i think reading the seerah of the prophet Sallam was one of the most um amazing things I think it because it's a book that I'd dipped in and out of but that's the other thing I think that helps me personally when I am uh, when I know okay I've got book club and I'm, I'm I need to obviously come up with some discussion questions it actually makes me really think more deeply about the things that I'm I'm reading and when it came to um the seerah of the prophet Sallam, I think it was just so lovely to be able to be transported um to the time i think of the prophet Salem, to really really um think about you know his experiences both you know the complete you know um magnitude of the fact that when he you know would have received um the you know his first revelation um and to think you know what it must have been like on, on you know on mount hira and alhamdulillah i've had the opportunity to um to, to do both umrah and hajj and when we were the first time actually our parents took us to umrah um I was 16 and we um, climbed actually the, the top of, um, I went to you know, the Mount Hira in, into the cave. And it was just amazing to think that the Prophet Sallam would have taken this journey so many times in his life just to get kind of um, have this area of seclusion for himself to be able to ponder, to contemplate the world that he was in. Um, and then you know, and how many of us really take the time out to do that? I went to a beautiful, beautiful talk on, um, actually, it just happened to be on, on, on New Year's Day. And um, Ustada, um, we we'll have to just double check the name, I think it was Ustada Tabor who came from, um, all the way from Edinburgh, actually, to, to join us. And she was um, talking about Surah al Qaf and the fact that the um, young people in the cave who were obviously, um, at the risk of persecution and they had to flee and they obviously um, found um, seclusion in a cave and obviously Allah then um, 
you know, basically had them under his protection for, you know, over 300 years. Um, and But it was just the fact that then she posed a question to all of us in the room that how many of us have an area of seclusion where we're able to um, get away from things and have our own spiritual space. And, you know, the most interesting thing she really talked about was the fact that that space, it doesn't even have to be a physical, like there doesn't have to be a physicality to it. It could be, and what was most interesting she mentioned that it could just be a book it could be a particular book that we really um, enjoy you know reading or you know it just gives us that time to read something and to reflect on something away from the daily hustle bustle and that in itself can also be a form of um, seclusion and retreat and I think it was so it's something I related to you know completely as soon as she said it and um I think these gatherings are so, so important where we are able to um, use any means really to just have a reminder for ourselves because it's really easy to just get, um, just get wound up in all the things that are doing, whether it's work, whether it's our children, um, anything that's going on. We get so busy in this idea of, you know, busy, being busy these days. It's meant to be almost like a, it's, um, it's a trendy thing. Oh, I'm so sorry. I couldn't call you. I was busy or, oh, I'm so sorry. I couldn't do this because, you know, I was doing such and such. And actually this, um, oh, I don't even know. Is it like a social ill now to be too busy? And this is me actually, you know, I'm guilty of it uh, myself. Um, I, I mean, I, I currently work part time. I also have my independent projects. Um, obviously, I have I have two two daughters and and all these things. And you suddenly think, you know, subhanAllah, that, you know, we are in this dunya for a very short time and how much are we really building for our akhira what are we doing to um really prepare for the life that actually really counts which is the afterlife and in all this busyness you know that's why it's so important to always also always always renew um our intentions because anything that we do if we have the intention that we're doing if please allah becomes an act of worship and it's something i'm always always trying to remind um myself in anything that I do and I think if we can all do that that every morning or even during the day and just say okay you know what this is a struggle or I'm finding you know work really difficult or you know I hate revising or whatever it might be as soon as you make that intention that Allah that I'm in the dunya it's a blessing and I'm doing what I am you know for your sake that in itself you know Allah will ease that path for us inshallah and um, it's one of the most important things and that's why I guess even you know when it comes to reading a book whether it's fiction non-fiction whatever that book might be even if you make that intention that you know Allah I'm reading this and you know I hope to gain some benefit from it where I can either benefit myself or you know my family or my children and just by making that intention even if you just read for five minutes right it will suddenly become um inshallah you know an, an opening for us and i think it's um really important that we remind ourselves to do those things we are now heading over to a break so you've been listening to imrana on the book club show i hope you have time to grab a cup of tea or coffee and maybe some biscuits if you want to be a bit naughty and i will speak to you in a few moments assalamu alaikum you're listening to an inspire fm podcast making available our popular programs from our daily broadcast on Inspire FM. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to the book club show on Inspire 105.1 FM. The time is 10.30 and it is Tuesday the 7th of January. My name is Imrana. Um, I hope you managed to grab yourselves um, a hot beverage and maybe uh, a cookie or two. Um, so I was just talking before the break about some of the books from 2019 that we discussed and had the pleasure of um, being able to read and, and really share with you. Um, but this half of the, of the uh, book club show, I'm going to be talking a little bit about some of the books that I I've got planned um, and I thought it'd be really good so um, you have a chance to maybe um, get to read them beforehand and then you can um, call in or obviously WhatsApp in any comments um, during the show of any particular book that we're discussing because I always I mean that what I that's what I basically relish on to have um, conversations about um, the books and have those um, 
I guess just insights from different people and different perspectives and I think that really um, gives a different um, dynamic on the books that we read so if you have any comments or views that you'd like to share today on general reading on books uh, that you might be reading or you're hoping to read um, I would love to hear from you so the number is 01582481822 or you can WhatsApp in on 07779481822 so as you know the book club show I tend to do every um, fortnight and um, a couple of the books are actually in particular um, what's so amazing recently is being able uh, to um, give a platform to different writers and authors to be able to talk about their work and um, what's really amazing is actually when um, I'm approached and you know um, from different people who are hearing about the show and they like to have their um, book featured um, to be able to obviously talk about some of their work and the reason for writing and I think you know I, it's something I, I, I love doing um, so I am um, even actually uh, w- I mentioned before in terms of um, Khalil Muhammad, obviously we talked about um, his comic book, um, Muslim All Stars. There was also um, Sara Malik, um, who had just published um, The Four Traits of a Cherished Muslim, which was basically about um, uh, about about marriage and how we can kind of navigate um, that whole relationship. So it's wonderful to be able to have those authors on. Um, now, we'll be having the pleasure of having... Um, a, a lovely author um, called Anika Rana, um, whose a novel is called Wild Boar in the Cane Field. Um, and she is, I mean, the, I will read the um, blurb uh, just to give you an idea of what the book's uh, about and then just talk to you a little bit about the author herself. So the blurb says, in a world of magic realism, a fly covered baby girl is found and raised by two mothers in a village rife with rituals and superstition. She pursues a acceptance at all costs while the villagers seek sanctity at a shrine dedicated to the keeper of the flies which is separated from the village by threatening cane field um so i've actually just um uh, so um anika um was um lovely enough to actually send me a copy of her novel and uh, you know as soon as i um received it i kind of um i loved actually i love opening <laughs> love opening packages of books actually um so uh, you probably can imagine that um I buy quite a few books. I mean, obviously, I use the excuse that I run, um, obviously, that I, I host the book club show. I also, um, uh, obviously, uh, founded the Ramana Book Club uh, with a friend. And obviously, but my husband doesn't always agree. He's constantly saying that I've got too many books. But obviously, I just tell him I don't have enough shelves. Um, so that's basically what I need to do, I think, for two thousand and um, for 2020. I just need to buy more shelves so I can um, put my beautiful books on them. So anyway, um Anika Rana, who, whose book is Wild Boar in the Cane Field, lives in California with her husband and two sons. When she's not working as an educator in the community college system, she visits her family in Pakistan and England. The rest of the time she reads, cooks, travels, enjoys mystical music and poetry, and does whatever it takes to keep her grounded and happy. Um, so I'm really, really looking forward to having Anika um, on the book club show on the 21st of um, January. Um, so that is in a couple of well, is in how many weeks? A couple of weeks. My math is terrible. So if it's, yeah. So in a couple of weeks and... Um it's obviously Tuesday um, between um, 10 and 11 a.m. And I'm really looking forward to speaking to um, Anika about this beautiful novel that she's written. And again, you know what I was talking about earlier about this idea of, of representation and being able to relate um, to something. I mean, straight away, actually, when I started reading it, one of the characters um, in the book is um, called um, Sophia, which is um, uh, my daughter's name. So, And I actually showed it to my daughter and she went... Oh, Oh, you know, and I think this is what I mean, that when even the, something simple as seeing our names in a book for a character is really, really important. Because otherwise, um, if we don't read that kind of diversity of books, we're always, it's always the same characters and ourselves as South Asians um, or whatever um, ethnic minority that we might be, um, to be able to read a book which we can relate to, like I said, it is something that's really, really um, important um, as well. Um, And in addition to that, as I mentioned, um, I have a regular slot for... um, a young girls a book club group who um, I think it's amazing actually that you know girls or actually you know their their mothers have kind of 
are given an opportunity um, for their children who I think majority of them are homeschoolers but to be able to come together form a book club where they meet regularly and then just to tap in and you know I had um, it's basically um, a sister Neelim who obviously um, hosts Mother's Planet on Fridays uh, Friday mornings and she just approached me and said you know we'd really like to be able to link into the book club show because it will give the girls an opportunity to um, discuss the book that they've been reading together and, and obviously having the pl- platform of you know um, Inspire FM and, and obviously a big shout out to um, Inspire FM who are constantly I think so so dedicated to um, the t- different communities in terms of giving a platform for all the amazing shows and the amazing um, kind of conversations like, I, I guess that are taking place and um, that's just an example the fact that obviously th- there's the book club show but I can also give an opportunity to, for, for our young people to come to come and talk about the things that are important to them so with um the young girls uh, book group um have actually by the way asked them to come up with a name so it will make it you know much much um it will make it easy for me really but i'm sure it'll, it'll, it'll be something interesting for them so they're working on a name but we are going to be discussing uh, the book being miss nobody written by tamsin winter um so the description of the book is I am Miss Nobody Rose, uh, Rosalind hates her new secondary school she's a weird girl who doesn't talk the mute aunt and it's easy to pick on someone who can't fight back so Rosalind starts a blog Miss Nobody a place to speak up a place where she has a voice but there's a problem is Miss Nobody becoming a bully herself um so this, I think, will be a really interesting discussion to have with um, the young, uh, the young readers. Um, the fact that if it is something that touches on the idea of of bullying, and we know from you know if we're maybe um, you know parents or teachers, or maybe we have you know young children in our families, that playground politics is such a big thing. I mean, we've all been through it. I mean, to be honest, you know, bullying even occurs um, even in our adult lives, whether it's the workplace or or you know even you know dare I say within our own families and um, it's again it's a topic that you know some people don't maybe talk about sometimes if you're in uh, you know in in a particular school who if they sh- every obviously every school should have uh, a policy in terms of anti-bullying uh, but we know for a fact that some teachers deal with you know issues like this you know better than others you know how much training have um, you know um, they had in terms of some of the issues that, that can come across but more important that than that I guess is what are we instilling um, in our children in terms of coming back to this idea of empathy and kindness and um a book like this, I think, you know, should be really interesting to be able to talk about um, with um, the children. I think this particular book by Tamsin Winter being uh, Miss being Miss Nobody, um, I think the recommended reading or it's aimed for children between nine and um, 12 years old. But what I've definitely found over the years is even books that are aimed at children are actually really, really um, good for, for adults to read. So um, like I mentioned, The Boy at the Back of the Class or, um, you know, another book that I'm actually I'm hoping to read, um, actually discuss on the book club show this year will be um, A Monster Calls by Patrick Ness. My my goodness, that book we read actually as Dara Armina Book Club and I was in absolute tears by the end of reading um, this beautiful and powerful um story and though the book is you know it's 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 meant to be aimed at children and I think from one of the primary school teachers I know it's even maybe in the curriculum for perhaps year six um, which actually I was a little bit surprised by because it's quite a heavy read in terms of the um the issues that it's kind of you know tackling and 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 trying to um talk about um but definitely, I mean, I, I, for any, you know, readers out there who think, oh, well, you know, it's just a children's book, I'll just buy it for my child or whatever. Actually, I would recommend to also read them because I think sometimes the simplicity of, of a story because it's for young minds actually can be really impressionable for even for even adults because otherwise we might suddenly you know tend to get swayed by a book where we think that um no we want to be uh, a read or something more our reading age or a bit more intellectual or whatever you know notion or preconception that we might have but actually what we've got to obviously always remember is the authors and the writers um i i would think that nobody when they write 
necessarily just thinks okay this is the age group and this is who I'm writing for I think as a writer and as an author you just want to write a story you want to share a journey of a, of, of a character or a particular character or share an experience those age recommendations obviously they just come maybe from the publishers um in terms of you know how we're actually selling or you know consuming something but that doesn't mean that obviously we should um, take ourselves out of the equation Um, and like I mentioned one of the things I've been recently doing my children is actually reading a book with them Um, my um, my youngest daughter she's been uh, uh, wanted to read um, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory probably because she likes chocolate and I like chocolate as well Um, and it's obviously it's a book and it's really lovely it's a book obviously I read growing up but being able to read it then with my daughter um, and the pleasure I think she takes from reading the book to me and then we'll take turns and I'll some, I might say, okay, let me read a chapter. And I think that's such a beautiful um, memory, I think, also to engage, uh, kind of ingrain almost in young minds, this for them to hear an adult, an adult that they are close to read back to them. Um, I think it, it, it's something that stays with you. It stays with you throughout your childhood. And it's a memory, I think, that would probably be, you know, quite cherished. And, and like I said, this idea of always being busy. And even as um, parents, I think we are constantly um you know doing other things but being able to take that 10 minutes out to read with your child I think is um you know it's something I'd highly recommend not that I'm you know great at doing it but it's definitely an intention um I've made um for this year um now another book that um and another author that I'll be really um excited to be having on the show is um, well, the book is called In the Company of Strangers and it's written by um, Aves Khan. Um, and again, the description of the book is In the glittering world of Pakistan's elite, all is not what it seems. Mona or Mona has almost everything money, friends, social status, everything except for freedom. Languishing in her golden cage, she craves a sense of belonging. Desperate for emotional release, she turns to a friend who introduces her to a world of glitter, um, glamour, covert affairs and drugs. There she meets Ali, a physically and emotionally wounded man years younger than her. Heady with love, she begins a delicate game of deceit that spirals out of control and threatens to shatter the deceptive facade of conservative conservatism erected by Lahori society and potentially destroy everything that Mona has ever held dear. Um, so this book is only actually recently um it was only recently released and I'm really, really excited to um, have the author of Es Khan um, to be joining us. Um, so I am actually just in the middle of, of um, just talking to him. So I'm able to... Um, booking a date really but you know and again it's really um i'm really excited the fact that i have author authors and and writers wanting to connect um with the book club show and just having that opportunity to talk about um to talk about their books and be able to share that and again this idea that um it's a pakistani author who you know and it, it gives me so much it really warms my heart actually to be able to um speak to um some yeah, amazing writers um so in terms of um this uh, book itself in the company of strangers um it's it was it's well it is a west khan's um, debut novel which is published in um the uk just last year in july and it has been doing really well it's hit the amazon bestseller list quite a few times and um it's been doing really well in print too so i am really looking forward to having um a vase on the show and as soon as i have um a date i will let you know but um again if it's you have the opportunity and you're thinking about what book you could read this year i would highly um recommend that and be lovely to hear um from some of um you about that um i've had a um message in and it says i'm actually looking forward to some diverse children books coming out in 2020 one of them is yasmin the writer by sadia faruqi so it's illustrated by hatim ali the book is about a little girl who's a writer as the title suggests and her class is given an assignment to write about their heroes but she can't decide who her hero is the book is aimed at uh, is aimed towards kids around five between five and eight years very excited to see a book featuring a little brown girl who's a writer that is really cool actually i hadn't actually come across that so the book just once again is um 
is called Yasmin the Writer by Sadia Faruqi. Actually, what I might do is let the <clears throat> the girls book club that I have as a regular slot, maybe I should um, just recommend that to them and we can definitely factor that in the show this year. I'm not quite sure who uh, the message is from so if you maybe just let me know who it's from and I would maybe perhaps because you've recommended the book if you were able to be on the show I think that'd be absolutely amazing Um, so anybody who is able to um, give me book suggestions then that would be really really cool and amazing actually so um, I'm looking forward to having people's recommendations in Um, and I think actually I wonder if that book might Oh, well, I'll just wait for the name. It might have been actually from... uh, So I had a a tweet from um, Huria, who is the founder of an online publication called um, The Selkie. And I'm definitely, definitely going to try to get um, uh, Huria on, actually. And she's just saying that she's had time to actually tune in to listen to the show. Thank you for listening in. Um, So coming back to some of... um, a couple of the other actually books and writers I'm hoping to have on the show. Um, oh yeah, I just got confirmation. It is it is um, Horea. <laughs> okay, and um, so I've just talked a little bit about in the company of strangers by Avias Khan, who I'm um, hoping to have as a uh, guest on the show. Also, um, is. I'm hoping to connect with um, a beautiful writer by the name of um, Sonia Kamel, and she's written the book Unmarriageable, um, which is unmarriageable, a novel. So it's basically the strap line called Pride and Prejudice in Pakistan. Now, what? Now, what better can we have than that, really? I mean, so I don't know how many of you have read um, Pride and, and Prejudice, but for people who've read it, the fact that it can now be almost um, transported to a story in Pakistan, I mean, I love, love, love the idea. Um, so the book description uh, for this is, it says, in this one-of-a-kind retelling of Pride and, uh, Pride and Prejudice set in modern-day Pakistan, um, Ali, Alice Bennett has sworn never to marry until an encounter with one Mr. Darcy at her wedding makes her reconsider. A scandal and vicious rumour concerning the Bennett family have destroyed their fortune and prospects with desirable marriages. But Alice, the second and most practical of the five Bennett daughters, has found happiness teaching English literature to schoolgirls, knowing that many of her students won't make it to graduation before dropping out to marry and have children. Alice teaches them about Jane Austen and her other literary heroes and hopes to inspire the girls to dream of more. And then, um, I mean, the, the description goes on, but obviously I'll share uh, more details on the day that on the show that we will be talking about Unmarriageable by Sonia Gummel. Um, so again, um, Sonia is um, a Pakistani... Um, it's a Pakistani writer who I think at the moment resides perhaps in America, but I have to, oh, let me just find that. It says here, no, it doesn't. So I will, I'll have to double check that. But um, again, so I just need to thank actually um, Anika Rana, who's the author of Wild Bear, of Wild Boar in the Canefield for um, getting me in touch with both Aves Khan and Sonia Gummel. And I'm really, really excited to be um and bringing them onto um, the book club show where we can talk about these, you know, beautiful and amazing books. Um, and I think other than that, really, some of the books that I myself would really like to um, talk about are some of the books that I've been on my shelf and they've just been sitting there, right? And some of them, which I've read, and some of them, I, you know, I shouldn't really admit it, that I haven't maybe, I've only half read or maybe not read at all and they've just been looking really pretty on my bookshelf. And this year, 2020 is time to not do that and um, to really use, I think, um, Inspire FM as a catalyst for me to make sure that I'm reading um and that I'm reading the books on my own shelf. Um, so a couple of them I'm looking forward to doing or reading or discussing some of the poetry books that I have on my shelf. Um, now, two of them are by um, two amazing um, spoken word poets who are really um, dear to my heart. I've met both of them and they're absolutely trailblazers and, you know, completely, I think, using their platform to speak, you know, um, speak truth to power. Um, so one is um, a book, a spoken a poet who is Amira Saleh, who is also part of Beat Freaks. She's written her 
um, poetry a book and the, it's called I Am Not From Here published by Verve Poetry Press and it's a collection that twists and turns through the complexities of being Birmingham born but of Yemeni and de- Yemeni descent and culture of being Muslim in a city of mixed faith and in a country of little faith um, so I'm really looking forward to also having a show about some of um, Amira's poetry and her spoken spoken word poetry um, as well and as well as that there's Suhaima Manzul Khan her um, poetry book is called Post Colonial Banter also published by Verve Poetry Press um, and with Suhaima I think she has um done great not in terms of I guess her spoken word poetry but in terms of using her platform um, to tackle things like um, Islamophobia you know counter extremism um, kind of in terms of the lens through prevent and um, you know she speaks a lot uh, you know for example uh, uh, you know different events and we actually had um, Sahema um, in Luton um, at Dharamana Book Club which when we were celebrating our five years um, talking about a Fly Girls Guide to University which is a um, a book which is written by herself but also um, co-authored by um, Lola Olufemi wait Way through a Santedra, and I can't now remember the other author, so I am sorry about that. But um, so it was really a pleasure to have Sahema um in Luton. But I'm really looking forward to um having a show where we will um look at her book Post Colonial Banter. So for any of you listening, if you're really into um, poetry, which I absolutely love, um, I would definitely recommend these two books: Post Colonial Banter by Sahema Khan and I'm Not From Here by Amira Saleh. Um. Then another couple of books that I had on my shelf, which I realised I've be- I kind of dipped in and out of, but actually I thought might be pretty fun to talk about <laughs> on um, the book club show. Uh, one is a it was a gift actually um, by a friend, and she apparently said that I use a lot of idioms in when I speak, um, and. I never noticed that before she said it. And as soon as she said it to me, I was like, oh my gosh, I do. So for anyone who doesn't know what um, an idiom is, um, I wouldn't, uh, to be honest, I don't know the exact definition, but I can give you an example of an idiom. So if you say, oh, that's the ke- uh, the, the pot calling the kettle black, right? That's apparently, I think, an idiom. Or if I say something like, um, oh, I can't think of any now. For somebody who's always using them, oh, I'll come up with some. Anyway, so this is why, that was the reason, apparently, because I use a lot of idioms, that this um, friend bought me a book called A Certain Je Ne Sais Quoi, um, which the subtitle for that is Words We Pinched From Other Languages. It's been written by Chloe Rhodes. Um, and I think it'll be a lot of fun, actually, to go through some of um, the different words actually in this book that we've apparently stolen which to be honest if we look at British history or the British Empire if we're good at one thing it's stealing other people's things so you know why why just change it just for language Um, so for example um, on page 106 of a certain je ne sais quoi is the uh, sorry the word kohl which means black powder in brackets Arabic. Kol is the same is sorry is the name for the dark grey or black powdered mineral that has been used in the Middle East since the Bronze Age, where when it amplified the beauty of Egyptian queens and was also used as protection from eye infections due to its antibacterial properties. It is um, still used in its original form in South Asia, where it is often put around the eyes of infants to protect them from the evil eye. We now use the word to describe heavily applied chemical-based eyeliner. <laughs> so the, the book has got an example. Kirsty staggered to the bedroom and braved the mirror. Her hair stood on end as if she'd been electrocuted. Um... And a last night's cold ringed eyes now made her look, oh, okay, <laughs> like a despondent panda. Interesting. Right, so that's, and in addition to that, another book I think will be fun to read is called Eat Shoots and Leaves by Lynn Trust, The Zero Tolerance Approach to Punctuation. So please don't say that we don't ever, you know, learn anything from uh, listening to the book club show. Actually, it's an opportunity to learn lots and lots of things. Um, so we are now heading to the end of the show like I said my next show on the 21st of January will be with Anika Rana where we will be discussing
running wild boar in the cane field which i'm really really excited about and obviously plenty more of writers authors guests and books to read in 2020 please start making your intention to do more reading whether it's um at your breakfast table whether it's in bed um i definitely recommend putting five ten minutes aside just to read a few words on the page and we know that the first revelation for the prophet Salam was iqra it was read and it was always something to remind us i hope you have a lovely week in the meantime assalamu alaikum thank you for listening to our podcast we stream our daily broadcast on inspirefm.org you'll find all our daily updates on our social media at inspirefm luton